Hi and welcome to this video about Twinkat and continuous integration and delivery. So working with the development of Twinkat software is usually a great deal of fun. There's a lot of interesting challenges that need to be overcome when designing PLC software. Uh, but what the world of automation lacks, at least in the large perspective, is the adoption of modern software development practices. Two of these that come to my mind is continuous integration and continuous delivery, abbreviated CICD. The adoption of CICD means to practice that software developers merge all working copies into a common mainline several times a day and by developing software in short cycles where you build, test and release the software with a high frequency. I decided it would be fun to look into some of these aspects uh, from the perspective of uh, writing Twinkat software. To get more information and the background to this video, uh, I've provided some links in the description uh, below where we can uh, read uh, some of the background. So in this video, I'll be demonstrating uh, Beckhoff's T1200, which is their static code analysis tool for Twinkat. Uh, and this is together with the build automation tool Jenkins, which is one of the standard tools for uh, automation of the different parts of the software build process. So uh, let's get to the demo. We'll start by going through the different parts in the automatic static code analysis for Twinkat. And uh, first we have the developers, that is you here, doing and working with the different Twinkat projects. And uh, so these Twinkat projects can all be made in the same version of Visual Studio and Twinkat, or they can be made using different versions of Visual Studio and Twinkat. Uh, our solution should be able to handle all different combinations. Next, we have a version control system, in this example, Git, uh, to where we store all the source code for, for our software. <clears throat> it should, however, be noted that it doesn't have to be Git. It can, for instance, be any other version control system, like Subversion. Next, we have our build automation server. In this case, we have Jenkins, that is uh, running the different jobs, uh, that is, executes and starts the... Um, uh, the static code analysis. To do that, we have uh, something called a slave basically here, where it's uh, this is basically what you would want to have if you did this manually. You have a computer with your Twinkat development environment installed with Visual Studio, uh, with Twinkat XAE. Uh, so this is the en engineering environment. Uh, the only difference here is that this build machine is uh, supporting all different kinds of versions of, of uh, Twinkat and Visual Studio. So here we will install all the versions uh, that, that we want to have supported by the versions of software uh, that we have in our projects here. So this basically uses this one uh, to do the, uh, to, to execute the actual static code analysis. Mm -hmm. And for the static code, code analysis to work, we need the license. Actually, we, we don't need the license, it's, it's, but it's the static code analysis is much more limited without a license. So if you don't have this license, you can still do some basic static code analysis. For instance, one of the things you can do is still to check for unused variables. But anyway, this uh, in this case, this will be connected to, to the build server. So we can run and do all of these projects just from one single machine. And then we have some common rules for the static code analysis so that if we, if we have a big, big projects where, where we have many, many different Twinkat projects in this, uh, we know that we're applying the same rules for, for all of the Twinkat projects. And um, so this basically detects that we have a change in, in, in the version control system and launches the static code analysis, sends the projects over to here and makes sure that the check is, is done here. And the final thing, of course, is to get the results back to the developers, that is you. In the next step, we'll be having a Twinkat project that we will do the static code analysis on. And uh, what we basically will have is a Windows batch script that is la launched from the Jenkins job. And what this Windows uh, batch script does is that it collects the information on where the Visual Studio solution file is and where the Twinkat project file is so that we can actually do the, so we can start and open the correct solution file. Uh, we'll be doing this, what this will be doing is also launching our uh, program that we've written in C-sharp 
that will do the actual code analysis. So, and it will do this through using the uh, Visual Studio development tools environment and the Twinket auto, uh, automation interface. When this has done its job, it will report the resol results back to Jenkins. And with these results, we can either print them so that the developer can look at them directly on the screen, or you can, for instance, set up Jenkins to send an email once you get the results back. What I'm gonna demonstrate now is to run this actual static code analysis using a Twinket project that I've prepared. And here we've got a virtual machine with uh, Jenkins installed on and all the uh, tools necessary to do the static code analysis, which is in this case uh, a couple of different versions of Visual Studio and also a couple of different versions of uh, Twinket. However, we'll, I'll only demonstrate this using one version of Visual Studio on Twinket. So we have the uh, job here, uh, Twinket static code analysis, that's supposed to be that's that that will execute automatically uh, once we have done a change to the code and pushed it over into the git repository so we have uh, the actual project that we're going to do the static code analysis on which is a, a simple project that will that we've defined two rules for in the static code analysis one rule says that if you have a a variable that you haven't that you're not using anywhere in the code like here you have a boolean that's not used anywhere it will emit a warning based on this rule and another rule that's gonna emit an error which is just another rule stating that uh, the string will be truncated because here we have hello world which is obviously longer than six characters so that this string will be truncated and, and we should get an error for that and all of this about these different rules uh, is, is in the documentation for uh, this uh, static code analysis tool from, from Beckhoff. So you can, you can read about all of these rules. So if we, for instance, look at the, the standard one, this SA0033, this, the unused variables. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And you have... An yeah, so it basically says determines variables that are declared but not used within the compiled program code. What I'll do now is I'm gonna commit and push this code to git so we should have the job uh, running this. And I'll start by just commit it as it is and uh, having them um, basically we'll get an error and a warning from this. So I'll do a commit. This is just a test commit to okay. Success. Yeah, and there we have the job started. And if we go here and do console output. We can actually see our batch file here being started and our, yeah, so we found the Visual Studio path, the Twinket project path. We have both the solution and the Twinket project. Uh, the different versions are detected, the Visual Studio version, the Twinket version, and now the actual static code analysis is done uh, in, this, uh, in this machine, in this virtual machine. So we just need to wait for the results basically. Yeah, and there we got the result. So here we can actually see, okay, we got some additional errors, but the only ones that are interested for us are the ones that are connected to the static code analysis. So we this program has automatically filtered out everything from the static code analysis, which is this rule 26 and 33 that we actually had defined for, for this solution. And as you can see, we have truncation of string hello world, an unused variable, just a simple boolean. And if you look now at the result of this job, uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, you can actually see that the latest one is uh, marked as a fail. So what I'm gonna do now instead is I'll be, 
I'll be uh, making sure that this error is uh, is not an error anymore, which basically is to increase the size of the string to say 30 characters. So we should only get a warning in that case. So let's try this again. Let's commit. Uh, where is it here? Commit another commit and push. Run. And this one should start first. Yeah, there it, there it goes. And again, we can check the console output just to see what's happening. And there we got the result. And as you can see, now we only got the warning so that we haven't used this variable, but the other error is gone. So what we marked the build as is now unstable uh, because we've only got warnings. So now we got a yellow little icon instead of, this, of the red one, which is failed because this one, in this one we had errors and warnings. Uh, and here we only got warnings. So the next step is to um, is to remove the the error, the warning as well, and have a build that's complete. So let's use this variable. Let's just assign true to it. And yeah, that should fix it. And um, push the code over to git. Another commit. And we should have it. So, yeah, so there it goes. And this again, it, it actually takes quite some time because you have you in in the background we actually have Visual Studio starting here, doing everything that you're used to when when doing standard Twinket uh, develop software development. So we have Visual Studio starting here, the Twinket project being loaded, the correct version of of, of the Twinket environment being selected. The static code analysis being run and, and then reported back. This is all happening in the background, so you can actually hear the CPU, uh, the, the fan in the computer being going faster here because of, of the CPU uh, load. And there you see, no errors anymore and the exit code is zero, which is success. So this build and job is now a success.